Greetings to each one this morning in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Welcome to each one. Glad you're here. Trust we can worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And I've been encouraged in worshiping together. The devotional this morning, Brother Scott read that verse. In verse 8 of Psalm 40 that said, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. I ask each one of us the question this morning, is the law of the Lord our delight? Is it dear to our heart to serve the Lord? And then it goes well with the Sunday school that we had of those that were hired into the vineyard to serve the householder. And some began to complain about their hard day's work and what they got out of it. I delight to do thy will, oh my God. It's a whole sight different from complaining and murmuring. Why do we complain and murmur at the law or the will of the Father? The only reason I believe that we do that is because of our carnality and our desire that runs contrary to the will of God. We don't like some of his laws and requirements that he has for a pure Christian life. May we have that testimony. I delight to do thy will, O God. And then it goes well with the opening verses that I was wanting to read out of Luke chapter 22, beginning in verse 14. I gave the title of the message this morning, A Memorial of Our Savior Jesus Christ. And as we read these few verses here in Luke 22, verse 14, it says, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. In other words, he's saying, with a, he was, he's been looking forward to this time. With desire I have desired to eat this. With a deep longing and anxiousness to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. I believe is what he was saying here. With desire. I believe this morning that it should be with desire that we have come to the house of God to worship. I believe it should also be with desire that we desire to fellowship around the communion table. It is with desire that we remember the sacrifice Jesus made on Calvary's cross for you and I. The blood that was shed, the pain, the agony, the suffering that he endured so that you and I can be redeemed. We can be set free. We can be given liberty in Jesus Christ. My dear friends, this morning, the cross of Jesus Christ is not a burden to those who have been born again. The cross of Jesus Christ is a joy to follow. It takes a t putting off of carnality, a putting off of the sins of the flesh. But it, it is not a cross to those who have tasted the good gift of Jesus Christ, and he is precious. He is something that is wonderful to be following because he gives us peace. He gives us joy. He gives us happiness in Christ Jesus. It's a total different thing than what the world has when they have to do what's right. My dear friends, we as God's people, we want to do what's right. We want to do his will. And it is with delight that we worship him here this morning. And it is with desire that we come to the communion table to get and remember the great price paid for my redemption. Verse 16, for I say unto you, I will not eat, not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise the cup after supper, saying, The cup is the New Testament of my blood which is shed for you. So there in verse 19 it says, This do in remembrance of me. Here Jesus gave a direct command, a a doctrine, if you will, for the God's people in the years to come following his death and resurrection that we are to remember him. This do in remembrance of me, Jesus said. That is where I got in my title a memorial. A remembrance is a memorial, if you will. This is a memorial service this morning of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, we again want to reflect on what Jesus bore for our sins. 
Jesus was mocked. He was ridiculed. He was given false implications that what he said was lies when it wasn't. It was gospel truth. He was, he was taken down the path of, of where, the, where the thieves and the robbers would go. The, the path up to the cross of Calvary. It was where the thieves and the robbers, it was given an implication of being a horrible man. And even before that, they laid whips on him and they scourged him with thongs where it tore open his body, where the blood flowed freely, plated a crown of thorns on his head, took staffs and beat upon his head till the blood was flowing down his head. All this he did for you and I. He did this to be the supreme sacrifice the blood of bulls and of goats could not attain unto the wonderful, clean, pure blood of Jesus Christ. It is through that blood this morning that we can be set free, that we can be pure and holy before God because Jesus paid the price. My dear friends, we are a blessed people. We have been forgiven. We've been set free. We are at liberty to serve our Lord. So this morning... We want to remember. It is a memorial designed to honor and pay tribute to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now in the natural, we have what we call memorial service. When someone passes, we have what we call a funeral or a memorial service. So why? Do we have a memorial service this morning? We want to remember the price that was paid so that in return we give our lives a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is but a reasonable service when we consider the price Jesus paid for you and I. Remember with love and gratitude. I believe those are the two key things this morning that is, that is my desire to get across to each one of us here. That it is with love and gratitude for Jesus is the motive and the purpose for communion. It is not just a symbol that we go through twice a year and it becomes meaningless. I believe that is why we, we have chosen. I don't believe it's, it's wrong to have it every Sunday. But we believe that we want the communion service to be special. So that with desire, we desire to be here and to commemorate of the suffering and death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to remember with love and gratitude. Love for the Master and thankfulness for what he has done for us. Love and gratitude is all part of the memorial. We know in the Old Testament, the Children of Israel made many memorials, often putting up stones as a marker, piled together, standing up in a place. And uh, Joshua had the 12 tribes mound stones from the stream bed of the Jordan River to mark where they crossed, dry shod, into the new countryside. Altars, places of worship or assembly all had their memorial observances in the Old Testament. They had all these so that they can remember. You know, many... Many times you'll see a statue, and we, there's one here in Brookfield, and there's a statue of uh, a war soldier. I forget the name. But uh, anyway, at the bottom of that, it says, lest we forget. That's what the memorial service is all about. Lest we forget the price that was paid on Calvary's cross so that you and I can have freedom. We can have life. And we can have peace, we can have joy, and we can have the gift of eternal life. What a blessing. The most enduring memorial through the Bible is a memorial made of the bread and the cup, the memorial given by the hand of Jesus himself, the meal of which he said, this do in remembrance of me. So as we think of memorial and communion, the two terms that we think about when we think of this service. Communion is a worshipful practice of taking bread and wine or grape juice as a memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection and of our relationship with him and other believers. 
It is a celebration of the gospel and the new life we have in Jesus. The term communion comes from the Latin word communio, which means fellowship, mutual participation, and sharing. My dear friends, this morning, the wonderful privilege we have of commemorating the suffering death of Jesus Christ is goes even further than just that. It is also the commemoration that we are one body in Christ Jesus. The bread that we break is many kernels molded together into one loaf. And it is because of, of this is representing the body of Jesus Christ that each one of us as different members can all be a part of the one body in Jesus. What a beautiful picture again. That it is not about just you, between you and God, and between Devon and God, or whatever. It's we as a body, unitedly, together, communing. It means that we have peace one with another, and we have peace with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We don't come to the communion table with, with ill will and bitterness and, and something in our heart that is not right. We don't come to the commun communion table knowing that there's sin that is not under the blood of Jesus. We, we come to the communion table because we have a love for the brotherhood and we have a love for Jesus. <clears throat> I heard the other evening at our brethren meeting that I believe Devon and Mary are planning to travel to southern Indiana here in a few weeks. Is that correct, Devon? And what are you doing there? Setting a gravestone for their father-in-law, for Mary's father. Why do you want to go all that distance to do that? For a memorial. Because finally he's out of the way. No. It's because of your love and gratitude for your father-in-law. A memorial. Do we have love and gratitude for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Why would we have love and gratitude? Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. We are healed. Oh, what a beautiful scripture. All these things were imparted to us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. And today, we are so thankful and happy that Jesus did not stay in the tomb. But as last week we commemorated Easter, he is alive. He is sitting at the Father's right hand today, interceding for you and I. It is with love and gratitude for Jesus that he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. How many of you have never sinned? None of us. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none of us that didn't need the blood of Jesus applied to our hearts. But by the grace of God, there go I, we could say, to the vilest sinner in the depths of the pit, of, of the gutter, you might say. It is only by the grace of God it is through this blood that was spent on Calvary's cross for you and I that we have hope, that we have joy. What a blessing. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Oh, how nice it is to be able to go to bed at night and close your eyes in peace. Knowing that all is under the blood of Jesus and that we can say, Lord, if it is my time to go while I sleep tonight, I'm looking forward to seeing you in glory. Knowing that we're right with God, my dear friends, is peace. It is a peace that the world doesn't know. They fear death. They fear meeting Almighty God on Judgment Day. God's people have a peace that passeth all understanding that will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What a blessing it is this morning that he... The chastisement of our peace was upon him. It is through the sacrifice of Calvary's cross that we have peace today. What a blessing. And with his stripes we are healed. I am Barabbas, a rebel well known. Insurrection and murder I've lustily sown. I steal from the rich and sometimes the poor. 
When I have an itch, I just scratch for more. Nothing too good for Barabbas, you see. Everyone should live his life for me. I'm one of a kind, a unique sort of man. I'm hard to define, but try if you can. I never give more than I have received. When I leave through the door, my friends are relieved. For everyone knows Barabbas by name. Wherever he goes, it's always the same. Son of the Father, that's what my name means. I've got the blood of a crook in my veins. I know I am guilty of all I'm accused. It was the... It was the innocent that I have abused. And so I'm in prison, and tomorrow I die. I'll die for good reason, so why should I cry? They say I'm to suffer on a cross as my fate. My soul is much troubled as I lie here and wait. And now here's the jailer. jailer he's calling my name. Barabbas, the time has come. You've no one to blame. But who is this Jesus who's looking for me as the crowd shouts my name and says, Set him free. Today is the Passover rich in tradition, but that means but little to a man of sedition. I offer no penance, I have not a lamb. I stand before justice just as I am. So why are they shouting, send him to the cross and let loose this Barabbas, my gain is his loss. Like a lamb to the slaughter, such a sad sight I see. They gave him bitter water, but they passed over me. He died on a cross in the midst of two thieves. There he paid the cost I had coming to me. They took him down, dead. And I walked away with a crown on his head. What more can I say? I would understand why I was reprieved. No nails in my hands, no nail in my feet. No thorns on my brow, no spear in my side. I still don't know why it was for me that he died. But I know it is true, and I'm here to proclaim. Salvation came through his blood and his name. It was Jesus who died for me, his life offered. Now I am Barabbas, a son of the Father. I just, I enjoyed that poem. Thinking of Barabbas, can you imagine? Condemned to die, a vile sinner, the vilest of vile men, you might say. He was justified to die. Or you know, in our thinking, it was, it was a just uh, sentence for him to die. Each one of us. The just sentence for our sins is death. But the gift of God through Jesus Christ is eternal life. We have, just like Barabbas, the condemnation of sin in our lives. But the gift of the Father is life. Spared from death. I have a little story here that says a young man was condemned to the guillotine and shut up in one of the prisons. He was greatly loved by many, but there was one who loved him more than all put together. How know we this? It was his own father, and the love he bore his son was proved in this way. When the lists were called, the father, whose name was exactly the same as the son's, answered to the name. And the father rode in the gloomy tumbrel out to the place of execution and his head rolled beneath the axe instead of his son, a victim to mighty love. See here an image of the love of Christ to sinners, for this Jesus died for the ungodly. Like this natural father gave his life for his son because of his love for his own flesh and blood son. So Jesus loved you and I so much that he went and bore our sins paid the price, took our condemnation upon himself, took the penalty so that we can be set free. Praise God. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. What a blessing. And my dear friends this morning, there are many that take that verse and hijack it. And say, as long as I have repented and sought the Lord's face, and I have asked him to be Lord of my life, now I can go on and I can do like the rest of the world does because I made that one commitment. My dear friends, this morning the people of God will follow the will of the Father not only as soon as they have accepted him as Lord, but they will continue faithful to him as long as they live. It's not just a one-time thing. It is a continual daily sanctification, living in the will of the Father. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 
For when ye were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man would even some dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Saved from wrath. What kind of wrath is he talking about here? I believe it is the wrath of eternal judgment. It is the wrath of being separated from God for eternity. That is the wrath that we are spared from through the sacrifice of his son Jesus on the cross applied to our lives. What a blessing. We are saved from wrath. Ephesians 4, 2 verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. For when you were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace are you saved. And hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Pausing there. For his great love wherewith he loved us, but he sent Jesus. For by grace are you saved. He has quickened us. He has made us alive in Christ Jesus. We are not just dead morsels that we have accepted Christ and we, we are his children and then go about as a dead fish. No, we are called to, to swim against the currents of sin of the world and the flesh. We are called to, to fight the good fight of faith and to lay hold on eternal life. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. My dear friends, this morning I believe this is part of it right here. We are made to sit together in heavenly places. We have a unity. We have a fellowship. We have a joy in fellowshipping around e with each other. It is the fellowship that brings us together and draws us unto him because we are all saved by the same blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus you were sometimes were far off. says, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We are nigh, made nigh unto Jesus. We are brought nigh unto God. No man cometh to the Father but by Jesus Christ. It is how we have access to the Father is through Jesus and through the sacrifice of Calvary. So this morning, not only does it bring us in close fellowship with God, but it brings us in close fellowship with our fellow man, with our fellow brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We have a fellowship that draws us nigh because it says in verse 18, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. When we are all being governed and controlled by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It brings unity of practice and doctrine. First Corinthians 10, 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Notice how that stands out there. All partakers of that one bread. Participation in the Lord's Supper identifies us as a true follower and worshiper of the Lord. When we partake of the cup and the bread, we declare that he is our Savior and Lord. And that we are in communion and fellowship with him. And that we are bound together with Christ by his body and blood, and that we have given our lives to him and that we are committed to obedience to all his commandments. The memorial of love and gratitude means that we are also committed to obedience to his commands. The single loaf of bread is a symbol of our oneness in Christ. To forget that and celebrate communion as a purely individual sacrament is what puts us in danger of partaking in an unworthy manner. Through Christ's broken body and shed blood, we become members one of another. Communion celebrates and memorializes that unity just as much as it does our personal salvation. <clears throat> so, communion, as I think of the word communion, common union it is a common union of those that are drawing from one flesh and one spirit Jesus Christ we all embrace things that are godly right and pure 
and embrace each other in love and mutual respect and goodwill. I, I class this as the unity of the spirit. And then we also have the other side that we call the spirit of unity, and that is a common union that does... Let me rephrase it differently. Some have a common union that if we all look alike, if we all do the same thing, if we all think the same way and do everything the same, then we have unity. That's not the unity that God desires. God desires of us to follow the spirit of Jesus Christ, the unity of the spirit. Differences of opinions and methods are not wrong. Diversity brings completeness. True Christians respect each other's differences without arousing bitter feelings of ill will which turn to gossip and other carnal reactions. We reveal our love for Jesus by our words and deeds to our fellow man. If we love Jesus, we will love his creation, his people. A common union that blesses and encourages each other. 1 John 4, 20, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he loveth God, love his brother also. And also Romans 13, 10, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. The Amplified Bible there would say, Love does no wrong to one's neighbor. It never hurts anybody. Therefore love meets all the requirements and is the fulfilling of the law. There's a whole lot of difference between obedience because of love or obedience because of fear. Someone has illustrated love as a fulfilling of the law in this way. A woman was married to a man whom she did not love. He made her get up every morning at 5 o'clock, cook his breakfast, and serve it at 6 o'clock sharp. He made her wait on him and was exacting in his demands on her time. Her life was made miserable trying to satisfy the requests of her husband. Finally, he died. After a few years, she married again. This time, she married a man whom she really loved. One day, while clearing out some old papers, she came across the strict set of rules her former husband had written out for her to obey. Carefully, she read them over. Get up at five. Serve breakfast at six sharp. On and on, she read. Then she stopped and thought and realized that she was fulfilling every single one of his demands, but she had not realized it because this time she was doing it for love's sake. So it is not difficult to serve the Lord Jesus or our fellow man when we possess love. It makes a big difference when we love or whether we don't. We willingly serve the master we love, and we willingly serve one another when we possess love. Many other verses we could, we could read on, on love. Uh, as a father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love, as Jesus' own words. When we are out of love, we are out of Jesus. God measures how much we love him by how much we love others. <clears throat> the communion table is celebrating our oneness in Christ Jesus. And it is hypocrisy if it is not real. The communion table will bring blessing or damnation on our lives today. And we trust it will be a blessing for all. Luke 18, verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee. That I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift as much of his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased. He that humbleth himself shall be exalted. I trust this morning that we are coming to the communion table as an unworthy recipient. 
Some trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others, and some smote upon their breasts, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. One went away justified, the other went away condemned. This morning, we are unworthy recipients of the gift of salvation through Jesus. Our good works do nothing to gain salvation. But when we have salvation, it will be revealed by good works. The Pharisee loved himself and despised others and went home condemned. The publican hated his own life, respected others, and went home justified. This morning, are we thankful for the price Jesus paid for our redemption, that we can have the peace that passes all understanding, we can have the joy of the Lord as our strength. We can be unified in the body of Jesus Christ. Why communion? Because of our gratitude and our love for the Lord Jesus, our Savior. We are the objects of God's grace. Let him be the object of our gratitude. Turn the time over to Brother Devon.